Here's <laughs> Belichick talking about whether he told the team that he was planning to have two quarterbacks play in that Monday night loss to the Bears. I talked to the quarterbacks, talked to the leaders of the team. Everybody knew what the plan was. I mean, not every single person, obviously. I wouldn't talk to every person about another player's role in the game. That's just they all have their jobs to do, but there was no lack of communication. He acknowledges in that response there's a chance that the message didn't trickle down to the likes of, oh, I don't know, Ramondre Stevenson, one of the most important players on offense, Jacoby Myers, one of the most important players on offense, because both of them said after the game, we didn't know anything about two-quarterback plan. What are you talking about? It's amazing to see that the Stepford Patriots got malfunctioning after that game. Like, shouldn't they have known? We should, yeah, yes, we knew. Yes, we, yes. If Bill did it, we knew. (laughs) It's something's off with the Patriots. And something's off with Belichick. He's rattled by this whole thing. I still want to know what the hell's going on. He was asked yesterday, who's your starting quarterback? Or no, is it Mac Jones if he's healthy? Well, I'm not going to answer hypothetical. What kind of hypothetical is that? What kind of hypothetical is that? We do have that sound. Let's let's go ahead and listen yeah, to okay, cool. Belichick. I skipped over. I skipped. I'm sorry. It's on me. It's my mistake. I'm willing to admit that it's my mistake. Not that somebody else is making a mistake 20% of the time. It's me making the mistake 20% of the time. Here's Belichick talking about whether or not Mac Jones will be the starter if healthy. Is it fair to say if he's healthy, he's the starter? Uh, again, th- uh, that's a hypothetical question. So let's let's see you know, where that is and what that is was mac jones healthy enough to play the entire game last night yeah well that that didn't happen so that's another hypothetical question health was one of the reasons why he came out of the game but he made mention of the fact that he felt pretty good last night when we spoke to him right yeah but that was that wasn't 70 plays He's taking liberties with the term hypothetical. Was he healthy enough to finish the game? Well, he didn't, so it's hypothetical. What are you talking about? That's not hypothetical. He didn't finish the game. Why didn't he finish the game? Was it a health issue? That's hypothetical because he didn't finish the game. Does he have any idea how stupid that sounds? I I, I don't know. I don't know exactly what they're trying to get accomplished up there. I don't. You know. And again, there's a part of me that thought uh, the way the game ended and the way that when Bailey Zappi looked on Monday night, especially when it became, all right, now we we got to break out of the mold of how we beat Detroit and how we beat Cleveland, which was we just uh, demolished them in the run game and had the most easy pass looks in the history of football, and Bailey Zappi looked good. You know, I thought that was the one thing after the other night that was kind of exposed. Like, Bailey Zappi, hey, yes. You know, everything's good when he can manage the game and they're dominant in the run game. But as soon as we got to, like, depend on him to, whoa, you got to make some plays and, you know, you got to push the envelope a little bit. And I thought that was pretty apparent that it's not that easy for Bailey Zappi. There's a difference between him and Mac Jones. There is. And again, even on some of the completions we saw the other night, they weren't all that impressive either. But these are like mistakes that, you know, again, I know Mac Jones is throwing some interceptions, but these, you know, there there was some bad balls, some bad decisions, you know, looking small and, and, you know, not adequate in the pocket at times. So that's where I'm surprised they didn't just go, no, when Mac Jones is healthy, he's back. He's the starter. But to your point, there's something there, and I don't know what it is. There's friction, and I don't know if they're also tactically trying to you know, play with Mac's mind a little bit to get him to play better? I don't know, but it just all seems odd to, to what you're saying, Mike. I think at the root of this, it's this idea that Mac's not happy about the shift from Josh McDaniels to Matt Patricia. It seems like judge. it. Right. And I think he said just enough that has gotten back to just enough people that it's pissed off Bill Belichick. That's what it seems like. And now like. we've got right. this Shakespearean drama. You know, and this is the guy who kept Malcolm Butler, who at the time was his best corner on the sidelines for the entirety of a Super Bowl, but for a special teams play to prove a point. We still don't know what point he was trying to prove, but his boat would be nine rings now 
not eight rings, if he had played Malcolm Butler in that game. His desire to prove a point to one person overcame his desire to win a Super Bowl. And that just gets forgotten. See, when you have risen to the top of your profession and you have all those pelts on the wall and pelts on the horse, you got so many pelts, you can put them in both places, Chris. (laughs) Then no one ever questions you. Well, why? Why? Why are you immune from ever being questioned just because you managed to navigate multiple past football seasons in a way that resulted with your fingerprints on the Lombardi Trophy? Why does that immunize you from scrutiny? That's the kind of hubris that isn't conducive to any organization. He had enough of it to bench Malcolm Butler when he needed him most. And now this this notion that he's in charge and he's going to prove a point to Mac Jones because how dare Mac Jones not be happy with the, the dramatic drop in offensive coaching ability from Josh McDaniels to a couple of guys who have never been offensive coaches. How dare he not be happy that his career is being undermined by not having a high-quality offensive coach? I, I think that's the root of it, Chris. And now Bill Belichick's out there proving points, playing games, pulling strings, showing everybody who's boss to the detriment of the team. Well, I, yeah, to the de- it is. It's shocking that way. And again, in a week where it's the Jets week, it's the Jets, the team, a team that's right now two games ahead of them in the division. And yeah, this is the number one story, certainly. And, you know, and again, I, you know, Bill and, and the way they do things there, it's top notch. I mean, we know that it is, but yeah, things seem off. Certainly it does. And, you know, everybody do your job and I understand that, but, uh, I, I, I don't know. It, it seems wishy-washy right now where we are with this subject and where I want to go is Mac Jones, you know, he didn't look like he re-injured himself the other night. So then he doesn't play in the second half. He's going to be, you know, much farther along this week than he was last week. Plus, I would think now, I mean, he's going to be able to take real live reps and practice, and you don't have to worry about anything to where I would think you would want to make a decision and and go with it. I I know he didn't play great the other night. You know, yeah, the game was moving faster on him. It was the first time he was out there in a while. He left the pocket early a few times. This was a stupid decision. He's made stupid decisions, you know, early in the year before he got hurt. But at the same time, I, I just I'm shocked that, yeah, we're kind of like on this seesaw right now with going back and forth and that Bill hasn't made something more definitive as far as to get everybody off this conversation or topic so the team can focus on what it needs to focus on. I, I can't remember the details of the reporting from Seth Wickersham, but remember after the fact there was the report about just whatever was going on between Brady and Garoppolo and Belichick dumped Garoppolo and – there was pressure from the craft ship. Right. Right. Yeah. I like, I feel like Wickersham is going to have a 10,000 word article on ESPN.com in a year or so, or if, if not sooner that, that really gets to the bottom of all this crap. Cause, because it's more obvious this time around, there's some crap there to get to the bottom of whatever happened with Brady and Garoppolo. It wasn't quite as obvious. It's far more obvious now that there's something going on. Yeah, there's something Definitely going there's on. Something going I don't on. know the exact details, but I know from people that are in the know that there is something there as far as friction along the lines of what you're talking about. You know, I haven't like dug into the subject and I'm not trying to find out every detail. I, I, but, but to your point and, you know, I know you've been saying it for weeks and it kind of just organically kind of fell on my lap last week, uh, talking to somebody, but yeah, I mean, I think you're, you're going down the right road here and that's where, you know, again, Mac Jones obviously was not happy about the decision or something there as far as the offensive coordinator, how that shook out. And I think you laid it out right. You know, he either complained to Belichick too much about those two or complained to Kraft about Belichick and the Patricia Judge thing. And, yes, it's caused Or complained some... to others and it got back to Belichick. Or got I back. think that's what happened. Yeah, maybe. Whatever exactly Mac right. Jones did right. got back to Belichick right. and pissed Belichick off. Right, right. It, it, it seems that way. It does. And he's kind of out of the trust tree right now. And, yeah, he's then you add on Mac didn't play well before he got hurt and made some big mistakes and some big moments. Moments, it, it feels like he's kind of sticking it to him right now just from a two guys like us on the outside looking in and I, I keep thinking back to last year Cam Newton's a starter Cam Newton's a starter Cam Newton's a starter oh wait we're going with Mac Jones get Cam Newton out of here 
I think because we we have to have one quarter. That's what makes this so odd. Yeah, right. That's Belichick what... understands you got to have one quarterback, and now he's got two. I think he's crazy to not you know go ahead and and make the just go with Mac Jones. I mean, again, he's the 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 you picked him in the top twenty. It was the fifteenth pick of the draft. As a rookie, he played really well, and at a point last year, we were in what week twelve, week thirteen, going. The Patriots, I think, are maybe the best team in football. He was playing phenomenal. They go to the playoffs. You know, again, gets a curveball thrown on to him that you know is unlike any we've ever seen. And I know you're supposed to trust the head coach and all that and everything that way in, in football world. But, yeah, losing McDaniels and, wait, a special teams coach, the defensive coach are going to be my offensive coordinator this year. You know, that, that is weird. You know, should he have talked about Belichick or that situation behind their back or whatever happened? No, he shouldn't have. He should have been careful there to know that that might get back to him. But at the same time, I just can't believe, like, Bill would do this to himself or his team right now. You know, I would think, you know, again, it's a guy. He's going through some growing pains. He's going through a new approach. Like, let's stick with him. Make him the guy. And like you said, limit the distractions and have the team formulate around you know the the sergeant general and your quarterback it's just amazing how the patriots post brady they'll go through these stretches where and and maybe maybe it's our inability this is the flip side of you know it takes time to process that the bengals aren't bad anymore it takes time to process when a bad team becomes good you look at the uniform and you you, you your brain doesn't want to register that they're good now maybe it's the same thing with the patriots that we see that uniform and we we can't, we can't accept that they're yeah. not great. So we just keep thinking, oh, it's just a matter of time before they're great. And it did happen last year. They got better and better and better as the season went on, and then they got blown out by the Bills in the wild card round. And a lot of people forgot that they were getting very good as the season went on. They beat the Bills in that Monday night game. Now the wind was an issue, and the, yeah, Bills, right. the Bills didn't deal with it the way they should have. They mimicked the Patriots game plan instead of just letting Josh Allen go out there and throw through the wind, which he would have been able to do if right. they just would have let him. Right. Different point altogether. But I, I feel like, you know, may, maybe we're, we're, we're kind of expecting that the Patriots are going to be better than they are. And maybe that's adding to this this weirdness that's going on because we just expect that they're going to figure it out the right way. Maybe they're just like any other team right now, middle of the pack. And these are the issues that middle of the pack teams have. Well, well, this is where it feels weird in this one, because I think we were having the feeling of what you're talking about. We're going, uh Oh, it looks like the Patriots kind of got things going here in the right direction. They're kind of playing good football on both sides here. I mean, doing some special things here to where we go, you know, we talked about it for, what, three weeks, the run game. It might be the hottest in football. The defense shutting down Cleveland, the you know, one of the best running teams in football. Detroit, it's the highest scoring offense in football. They can't do Jack Diddley squat. So everything seemed like it was going your way. And what's weird here, and I think it's it's kind of what we're saying, is it feels like Belichick messed up the momentum for the first time ever. It just, it feels, that's where it's weird. Like I said yesterday when we started the show, I, it just, it seemed like when I heard Mac Jones might play or they might split time, I just went, man, it just seems like weird for New England to take this approach. We didn't hear about it all week. It doesn't sound like he practiced fully. And now we're into, wait, he's going to play all of a sudden or, oh, wait, they're both going to play. And if, I just feel like it messed up the mojo of the football team a little bit and just the energy around the football team altogether. And now they're in this no man's land because of this conversation at quarterback. And now they got the the five and two Jets. Uh, what, what a strange reversal where the Jets are the team that is doing well and the Patriots are trying to figure it all out. All right, when we return, we're going to try to figure out what in the world was going on between Buccaneers receiver Mike Evans and a couple of officials after Sunday's game because nobody is giving anybody a straight answer. We'll try to make sense of it when PFT Live, presented by Google Pixel, continues right after this. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk. 